Hi there, my name is Dustin Dolby. Today I'm going to run you through my workflow for photographing cosmetic products in this really high-end catalog kind of style. So having our lipstick sit in this white sort of 3D canvas is a real technical hurdle to overcome. So leaving our front light totally out of the equation, I just brought in a backlight and this will act as our background. And let me show you what this is looking like because you may have noticed the lipstick is sitting on a piece of white plexiglass. So this is underexposed, but we see the reflection and we see sort of how we're going to craft the canvas. Now let's apply a crop and I'll apply that crop to all subsequent exposures. And the reason I have to crop is I'm as close as I can get to this lipstick at 18 millimeters and still focus. Um, you want to use 18, a wide focal length, because that gives you distortion to make your product look heroic and towering and kind of larger than life. And that's a, that's a positive distortion in my mind. So let's turn up the power of this backlight and see if we can start blurring the line between foreground and background elements. Something like that. Um, I'd say we're pushing 80% white, maybe 90. And the important thing to keep in mind is the front light to lift up those values even further. So we've built a bit of a quasi silhouette to start painting light onto. And that's really important because that's going to make for a smooth edit, having a nice bright background. We're not relying on cutting things out in Photoshop per se. So let's just put down our strip light and see how it looks. That's all you can really do, right? Okay, that's a step in the right direction. I'd say we're probably a little far away from our subject. Looks a little thin, the specular highlight that is. And you know, I find you really have to tweak your lighting quite a bit to have things sit really gorgeously. Something like that looks quite strong. What do you guys think? You're starting to see the style come out a bit, I think. Now, I'm actually going to make one small adjustment. I'll move this even further back. And I'll show you why I did that in just a minute. Okay, so that highlight might look like it's a little close to the edge, actually. You might have preferred the one before it. But once we bring in a dark piece of card behind our subject, it's going to change everything. Change everything. Let me just show you what this did. If we go back and forth, we'll see that black card made that edge crispen up and it really revealed to us where the edge existed because it blocked all that bright erroneous light. Now, I think that that's a really solid exposure in terms of the left side of the product. What do you guys think? I think we'll, we'll bring that one into post. We really want to flip over our lighting equipment now in a symmetrical fashion. And again, we'll just sit down the strip light and see how it plays off the environment, so to speak. Okay, not too shabby. Probably a little distant. I find with small items like a lipstick, you really have to get your lights close. That is if you're going for a bold highlight. And we are. So that looks really nice. Um, you know what? I actually think that looks kind of perfect. Yeah, we'll leave that like that. Now we want to block some light. And since we're at the right side of the product, guess where we're blocking the light from? So again, we'll sharpen up that edge as a final exposure. And we'll do a quality check real quick, Domino's Pizza style. And I think it's there. Um, there's a bit of a nervous highlight up here in the contour. Do you think we can get rid of that in camera? Well, let's try. We can always block light from above. And let's see if that did the trick. Yeah, I got rid of it. So that just shows you just blocking light with a bit of paper or black card. It really saves you a lot of time in post, but I find it also injects a lot of realism into your work because you're really showing the data of what was in the contour up there. Like, look at this. I think that's actually really nice the way that is. Photoshop wouldn't have done that justice. So I think this exposure, actually this exposure, and the original left, I think that's all the information we need to bring this into post to craft something really, really gorgeous. Okay, so here we are inside of post-production. And when I imported my exposures, I made sure to alt click the white point such that my lipstick is surrounded in white pixels. That just makes for a really smooth edit. Now, in doing so, I blew out a tiny bit of information that I was able to bring back. To bring it back, I just imported a darkened version of the layer and I masked it in a few appropriate locations where that information was blown out. So that tells me that my background wasn't quite bright enough in camera. I probably should have turned it up one more notch. So this is just our right exposure. And before bringing in the left one, I really want to tweak this one to make it perfect. And I've already done so. So these panels were looking kind of asymmetrical. So I warped them to fix that just with the command T uh, warp mesh up here. It's really a godsend. 
I also brightened up this left panel and I even copy and pasted this black line here and just flipped it over to the front. So things are looking a lot more symmetrical and at this point I was ready to bring in that left exposure. So I'll show you what that looks like. It's kind of like turning on a light switch just like that. And you know I paid some real time masking this in. So here's my mask. White is where the layer is allowed to exist. Black is where it's emitted. So where I chose to omit the layer is areas like that left light panel that already looked really strong. In fact, the left exposure has a black panel because of our flag here, remember that? So again, it's about bringing in the best, strongest parts from every exposure and painting them together. And I took some time in doing that. So things are looking really groovy. Obviously things are looking kind of dusty and dirty and we need to fix things uh, uh, universally, but locally I'm pretty confident with how the image is looking. My next thought was to get rid of anything that looks kind of dark and distracting and dramatic like this inner reflection here. I made a simple selection to brighten that up and I made a few fixes to the cap here it is on and off. Um, before I fixed it there was just a really nervous sort of low light going on down here. I just extended that with simple copy and paste. I also got rid of a little scuff up here. So let's talk about scuffs. There's not enough time in this world for scuffs. You got to get rid of them. Let me actually turn this next layer on and off. It's my cleaning layer. And you'll see all the scuffs and dust I got rid of. Now, would you look at that? My name's Dustin, so I know a thing or two about dust. And you really want to spend time getting rid of that. I like hitting J on my keyboard to use the patch tool. And you can make a simple selection around a piece of dust and just drag it over and resample it somewhere that isn't dusty, preferably. So I spent a lot of time doing that. You can see how that pays off big time. I cleaned this before I shot it and it still gets dusty. It's just floating in the air and cameras are so good these days that, you know, no matter how much you clean your product, you're going to spend time digitally cleaning it. So you're going to want to get good at that using the patch tool with command J. Oh no, not command J, just J. So moving right along here, we'll turn that layer on. Um, I chose to make a completely black and white version of my layer on everything I've done so far. And I masked that in so it can just exist where metals exist. I don't even know if you could see that before and after really. So here is where I masked it to be. Looks kind of like a wild ride because it is. And the reason I did that, let me show you. Let's say your client wanted you to make this in 32 colors for say a collection or something like that. Well, let me let me make a crazy color here. Let's say your client wants his, his crazy roaring. Whoa, that's a nutty color, but we'll deal with it. Now, if we didn't desaturate these metal areas, this chromatic aberration, see how that just went wild? It would go nuts with that local adjustment. So by desaturating the product before we do that, you totally get rid of that issue and you don't allow any sort of weird glows in the metal to respond to adjustments you're going to be making later. So we desaturated all the metals. And you know, that's something I like to do anyway. It's just aesthetically pleasing. I generally think metal as, you know, being monochromatic, unless it's, you know, a rose gold or, you know, a certain colored metal. So I just did that, and that's something I always do. Now I got rid of this line because it looked kind of displeasing. But here's the thing. There really is a contour, a little bevel there in the product. So should I not have gotten rid of that? Is that an unethical editing decision? Le leave me a comment below and let me have it. I want to know. Okay, so moving forward, I made a few more chromatic aberration fixes. Now we touched on chromatic aberration in the metals. Let's take a look at what they are down here. Do you see if I turn this off? and on. Do you see this purple glow here? That's chromatic aberration. So it's an optical phenomena which makes things glow purple and green or you know all sorts of colors really. It's really unfortunate. I couldn't get rid of it here but I could mitigate it and how I chose to do that was I got these four layers. They're on hue mode. If I put them on normal you'll see they're just big brush strokes and I've sampled colors from the image here and just brushed over the glowing chromatic aberration and by setting that a hue mode Again, I don't get rid of the problem, but I force the chromatic aberration to color itself like the adjacent hues. So it really mitigates the problem and looks a lot less distracting. Okay, so I darkened the word Clinique, which is just a no-brainer. I wanted the brand to look a little more crisp and stand out. Um, I actually brightened the top part of this lipstick because just like this inner reflection, it looked kind of dark and distracting. I brightened it and blurred it, which I think does it a lot of justice, especially while looking from afar. Uh, looks a lot less distracting. I did a final colorization where I painted 
Again, on hue mode, I sampled colors from around this area, you know, around the hues of the lipstick, and I painted it over the reflection to get rid of um, some sort of blue cast that I kind of found in the reflection. So again, by colorizing uh, 32 colors in a collection of this lipstick, you'd avoid crazy problems in the reflection by just applying a local hue that can be found in the lipstick to your reflection. Okay, one last thing I did was darken the image. Um, I darkened these kind of black areas because I want that really high-end boutique kind of look, that nice sharp catalog kind of look. And another crazy mask there. You know, I just kind of put a brush on a low opacity and I would just brush in multiple times wherever I think something should be dark, like those edges. So overall, I'm really happy with how this is looking. We haven't cropped anything yet, but we can just do a really simple lasso on a new layer here. We'll say L, bring up our lasso tool, and we'll draw around the product. And we're not going to use the whole reflection, but maybe just something like that. And we will invert that selection, bring white as our foreground color, and I'll delete that. We can even hit G to bring up a gradient, and we'll do a little gradient here so this doesn't look as black and white. And overall, there you go. There's our final image. Like I said, I like how this turned out. Here's some food for thought. I think we did a really good job of comping in multiple strip light exposures here. Um, one thing to keep in mind is if you're shooting with the appropriate amount of lights live on location, you get immediate feedback. You know, we didn't really know what this image was going to look like until we shot it, but if you shoot organically, so to speak, you'll see the lights play off each other live, and that feedback can really direct you to make something look stronger compositionally, et cetera, et cetera. But I'm hoping you love this tutorial. I have a lot more on the way if you love this, so make sure to subscribe. Thumbs up if you have time, and wherever you are, make sure you have a beautiful day. I'll see you all soon.